Welcome to Glastonbury. This is Glastonbury Abbey, once one of the most powerful medieval abbeys. Built in the early medieval era and destroyed during the reign of Henry VIII, it is a magical place. So let's explore some of the history and mythology of the site. We start at the Lady Chapel, which was built after a fire destroyed the previous church in 1184. As you can see, this is a monumental site, and for the most part, it's pretty intact. The walls and doorways are decorated with gorgeous Romanesque and Gothic designs. All the floors are knocked through, so you can see directly through to the Crypt Chapel of St. Joseph of Arimathea, added in the 15th century. He was said to have founded the Abbey, and this crypt, tucked beneath the Lady Chapel, became the site of a healing cult dedicated to him in the 16th century. If you walk just a few hundred metres south of the Ladies' Chapel, you will find the Abbot's Kitchens, some of the best preserved medieval kitchens in the UK. It was built around 1330, and this particular one was for the use of the Abbot's staff alone. There were four ovens, each of which had a different purpose. In the corner, a pastry oven. Here, a general purpose oven, which handily allows us to teleport to the other side of the room. Below my feet, I realised I was standing on a wishing well. And obviously, I couldn't resist having a cheeky wish before we moved on to the next part of the abbey. In 1191, monks at the abbey uncovered a grave in which were buried two figures. On the grave, it says, Here lies interred King Arthur on the Isle of Avalon. Did this actually happen? Highly, highly doubtful but a tomb to Arthur stood at Glastonbury until the dissolution of the monasteries. William of Malmesbury says that Arthur's tomb was placed centrally, between two stone monuments with inscriptions that he couldn't read. These are now thought to have been Anglo-Saxon stone crosses. Now, of course, no visit to Glastonbury is complete without seeing the iconic Tor, the hill that overlooks the town. Lots of people think that the tower at Glastonbury Tor is the Tor in question, but Tor actually comes from the Old English Tor, which in this case refers to the high rocky hill. Tor can also mean tower, but the tower actually postdates the name and is a remnant of the 14th century Church of St. Michael, destroyed in the dissolution of the monasteries. Traipsing through field after muddy field, I was nonetheless so excited to be here. This is another location suspected to have been Avalon, and the Arthurian legend is written into the land surrounding Glastonbury. Just as fascinating to me though, is this peculiarly flat path. These terraces could be the remnants of an Iron Age hill fort, or, as Ronald Hutton suggests, it could be a medieval spiral walkway to help monks reach the summit. And like the monks, here we are at the summit. It is gorgeous here. You can see for miles in every direction. What's also wonderful is how many different types of people are here, whether it's people on pilgrimages, historians, or even just local dog walkers. To me, St. Michael's Tower has more value as a landmark than as an actual archaeological site. Inside the church is quite pedestrian, there's no roof, no rest of the church, and the sculpture is difficult to see. It is, however, quite touching to see how many people have been truly moved by the site, and have left their names engraved in the walls. Sitting there, I felt like I'd made some sort of pilgrimage, like Gawain from Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, who had journeyed to the Green Chapel to meet his fate. I was, however, probably just cold and a little bit hungry. My girlfriend and I had one final place we wanted to visit before we left Glastonbury, and this is Chalice Well, an ancient spring where legend has it that Joseph of Arimathea buried the Holy Grail, colouring the waters red forevermore. Conveniently, the red spring can be found right at the bottom of the Tor, in a beautiful garden. It's difficult to see here, but the water coming out of the spring is actually slightly tinted red, this is said to be Christ's blood, or the rust from the nails of his cross, and is said to have miraculous healing qualities, so naturally I knelt down and I drank a little, as many people before me have. It tasted like rust, but also of earth, and it was very, very fresh. I feel like Chalice Gardens was the perfect place to end our day in Glastonbury, a wonderful area of reflection and quiet before we got on the bus back home.